Hello and welcome back to another Momini Studio tutorial. My name is Tzach and I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Momini. In today's tutorial, we will make our first use of capabilities. Capabilities are the basis for efficient logic reuse. You should not worry if you do not understand everything I just said perfectly. It should become clear to you as we advance in the tutorial. This time around, we will not load anything and simply start with a clean slate. Today's game is going to be all about babies. We're going to create a game with the baby types. One is super strong and can walk through obstacles, and the other one gets thrown back when it hits an obstacle. Using what we have learned so far would require us to create two completely separate babies, each with its own logic and animation configuration. We would have to duplicate the events and the actions, even when we would like both our babies to act in the same way. To save us the redundancy and reduce the amount of work we have to do, I will now introduce a new object type, the capability. So far, we have worked with two object types, sprites and controllers. Sprites were used when a visual or a physical representation was required, and controllers when creating game managers that were working in the background. Capabilities, on the other hand, are not a completely different type and are sort of an abstract or partial sprite. Just like sprites, capabilities may contain both visual elements and logic. The difference lies in the fact that neither is really required. In other words, using a capability, I can define some logic and not specify the animations or the animation frames. As you can realize, this would result in an incomplete object. For this reason, capabilities cannot be placed directly inside a game room and cannot be created dynamically either. Instead, capabilities can be used by sprites to inherit their logic and visual aspects. Let's demonstrate what I mean. While our two baby types are not the same, they have some identical properties. We would like both our babies to be controlled using the keys and to have walking animations. We will start by creating an object that contains these characteristics. Notice that instead of creating a sprite, we are now working with a capability. We will add two animations, standing and walking. As you can see, although our animations are empty and don't contain frames, no errors were added to the list. This is because, like we said before, Capabilities are not required to be a complete sprite. Now we will add the movement logic. When the player presses right, we want our baby to change its speed to 30 on the X axis. We would also like to change the animation from standing to walking. Now let's make a copy of the event and change it to a left key press. We will change the speed to negative 30. It is time to create our two baby sprites. We will start with our normal baby and enter the properties tab for the first time. This view is made up of two sections. What am I at the top and properties at the bottom. For the time being, let's ignore the bottom half. Pressing the Add Capability button displays a list of objects. We will select the Movable Capability. Moving to the Resources tab, you can see that the walking and standing animation that we added to the Movable Capability also appear in our normal baby. The little picture at the top left lets us know that the animation was inherited and that we cannot delete it. Let's add the required frames to the standing animation. And now we will do the same with the walking animation. Lastly, we will drag an instance of our normal baby into the room. Let's test this. As you can see, we have a baby that we can set in motion by pressing either right or left. 
Remember, the movement logic was never given directly to the normal baby. This was implemented completely in the movable capability and was then inherited by our normal baby. We will now move on to making the second baby, Super Baby. To save us time, we will duplicate the normal baby object and rename it to Super Baby. As you can see, all the logic and visual aspects of the normal baby were duplicated. Let's start by changing the animations of the Super Baby and making it look a bit different. First, we change the standing animation. And now the walking animation. We'll place a Super Baby instance in the room, right below the normal baby. As you can see, we now have both of our babies responding to our keyboard presses. Let's improve the baby's movement appearance. Let's make the baby change the direction it is facing whenever it changes the direction of movement. We will use the Sprite Transform action. This action takes care of rotating and mirroring sprites. This may be changed in the future when a relative checkbox is added, but currently this action operates in absolute rotation. In other words, the rotation is not relative to the current rotation state, but is relative to no rotation state. This means that rotating a sprite by 90 degrees twice would cause the second rotation to be ignored. Nothing would change the sprite would remain in 90 degrees rotation state. The effect of rotating another 90 degrees would require setting the transform action to a rotation of 180 degrees. For our purpose, we'll select none. Since the transformation is not performed relatively and is completely absolute, this will bring the baby back to its normal rotation state. Now moving over to the left key press event, we will also add a transform 